So I'm not sure how many of you have been following this issue, but uh, for those of you unaware, Louis DeJoy, the postmaster general of the USPS, who was appointed by Donald Trump, he's still in power. He hasn't gone anywhere. And yes, he is still indeed trying to ruin the U.S. Postal Service. And ultimately, his goal is to privatize USPS. But he's doing this in a very nefarious, insidious, roundabout way, all explained in an article by Common Dreams' Jake Johnson, who writes, Defenders of the U.S. Postal Service are urgently renewing their calls for the ouster of Postmaster General Louis DeJoy as his 10-year plan to overhaul the cherished government institution is set to take effect Friday, ushering in permanently slower mail delivery while hiking prices for consumers. DeJoy calls his plan delivering for America, but it will do the exact opposite, slowing many first-class mail deliveries down, taking their standard from three to five days. Porter McConnell of Take on Wall Street, a co-founder of the Save the Post Office Coalition, warns in a video posted online late Tuesday. Slower ground transportation will now be prioritized over air transportation, McConnell added. These new service standards won't improve the postal service. They will make it harder for people all across the country to receive their medications, their bills, their paychecks, and more. Appointed in May of 2020 by the U.S. Postal Service Board of Governors, DeJoy, a major donor to former President Donald Trump, sparked a nationwide uproar by dramatic slowing mail delivery in the run-up to that year's pivotal elections, which relied heavily on absentee voting due to the coronavirus pandemic. But DeJoy, who can only be fired by a majority of the USPS board, has clung to his job despite incessant demands for his resignation or removal over the past year. In recent months, calls for DeJoy's termination have intensified as his conflicts of interest and past fundraising activities continue to draw scrutiny from watchdogs and the FBI. During a House Oversight Committee hearing in February, DeJoy made clear he has no intention of leaving his post voluntarily. Get used to me, he told lawmakers. Get used to me, he says. This smug, smug motherfucker, this unelected bureaucrat telling lawmakers, I'm not going anywhere. Deal with it. Wow. Now, the way that he is trying to destroy the U.S. Postal Service is by making privatization more likely. So what you do is you slow down the service, you make people frustrated, and you claim, well, maybe there's a solution to all of this. And of course, they propose privatization. And the reason why he can't just go ahead with opening up the U.S. Postal Service to privatization right away is because this is one of the most popular institutions in the United States as the article implied, in fact, USPS has a 91% approval rating according to the USPS Inspector General, so you can cultivate support for privatization as a solution only if you break this first. You're not going to get people to accept a, a really sweeping change to a system that they overwhelmingly support, so first, you've got to make it not work for them. You've got to strip out uh, the support that it has, and then you open the door to privatization. You argue that this is going to be the way to make the Postal Service more efficient. Cut out the bureaucracy. It's the same game we've seen again and again. It's the same thing that politicians do with regard to Social Security, albeit a little bit differently. What they'll usually say is, look, Social Security is running out. It's not going to be there for future generations. It's going to be insolvent in 2035, yada, yada, yada. And what they do is they fearmonger in hopes that you'll accept the idea of possibly a solution. What's the solution, of course, to privatize or maybe even partially privatize Social Security? It's the same song and dance we've seen again and again. Whatever public institution we have, Republicans, they'll break it and then they'll claim how government doesn't work. It doesn't work because you broke it and because you want your corporate donors to be able to control it and profit off of it. But this is a public service. So this guy's got to go. This 10-year plan is going to ruin the U.S. Postal Service. So Biden, one, should absolutely be using his bully pulpit to put pressure on him constantly to get him to resign, even if he's resistant. Put pressure on him. Continue with the investigations and the conflicts of interest. I mean, this man got this job because he donated to Donald Trump. He's there as a result of corruption. So investigate him. Throw the books at him. But on top of that... 
Biden should be making moves to remake the USPS. He can't actually fire Louis DeJoy outright, but the article does lay out a strategy that Biden can use to basically get rid of him. So while the president can't remove DeJoy on his own, analysts have noted that he can soon replace both Bloom, who is currently serving a one-year holdover term, and John Barger, whose term expires in December. Such steps would give Biden appointees a majority on the USPS board and potentially the votes to oust the postmaster general. So once Biden gets a majority, he can then instruct his majority to vote out DeJoy. And that's what you do if you want to fire him. That's how you oust him. So there needs to be pressure exerted on Biden and pressure exerted on DeJoy also through Biden and also, you know, around Biden. People should be continuously exerting pressure on him because he doesn't care about the Postal Service. He's just trying to ruin it. So... Republicans can inevitably propose privatization as a solution. And it's not just Republicans. I'm sure there are many Democrats who also would like to privatize the U.S. Postal Service. Uh, Pete Buttigieg, I believe, during his presidential campaign uh, was saying something about maybe, you know, opening the door to privatization. I, I'm not necessarily representing his views correctly here, but just long story short, Democrats a lot of the times are on board with privatization because neoliberalism has taken over the Democratic Party. So, I mean, I don't know what else to say. This would be a disaster if this plan were to go into effect, but it's not going to improve the Postal Service, obviously. It's quite literally intentionally designed to make it worse. And so the way that we stop that is to stop him by kicking his ass out. Beta male.